So the flea market is a real community fire. It's under the M32 flea market off the second junction. It's right underneath the bridge. You get all that shelter, you get a real community vibe with all different music, same sort of vibe as reggae and funk and side trance and drum and bass. And I don't know who plays the music, but yeah, it keeps me going. So I've just got back. I don't know if you can tell, but I just wanted to show how I got on, what goes into these markets, the work that goes into them. Usually because I leave it last minute and I think of all the little things I can do. Like, okay, ah, that's what my stock's doing. So I need more miniatures, I need more stickers, I need more. And stickers you have to order way in advance, but sometimes I make little original. So just wanted to show you my week, how I got on. I met a load of people from BS5 Art Trail who I haven't seen for years. I uh, got on with people either side of me. I filmed what I could. A lot of people I asked, some people asked why you're filming. I was, I was trying to find who the stall was and asked, but not everyone wants to be on camera or have their work on camera, even though I wanted to advertise artists. And I think people need to know you and they wonder what your agenda is. But some people are like, oh yeah, well, yeah, whatever. So there's some, some really nice footage of people doing performance and various things. But anyway, let's go back to the past, back to chronological and this is how I got on with the flea market. Okay, so I got all of this from various art trails and things that are, is fairly organised, although they didn't look like it. I do try and look after my art, I do. Yeah, where do you put it? It all looks very nice when it's on the table. stamp normally works a lot better than this but I probably should actually clean it at some point. I did religiously for the first few weeks but apparently no one else does but I think it needs it now so I'll have to just fill in the rest of the letters myself but it's nice to be able to have some sort of branding or people can find you easily without having to remember your name although probably need a name that's easy to memorize rather than just extemporary art and I don't know why but I find it difficult saying my own name because it doesn't feel like me I don't feel like a Chris which is very common I don't feel like a Shopland which is weird in the sense of Anglo-Saxon and Shopland and I got teased for it um, many times like oh are you from the land of shops uh, good one here yeah. but I haven't quite thought up a good moniker a good pseudonym just yet or what feels like me and that I can step into. Even though I'm 36 and I probably should think of art identity by now. But extemporary art does really encapsulate what I do, but I don't know if it really is me when it comes to an actual artist name. So I'm still figuring that out and I don't want to confuse people with the whole branding thing. But what name do I go under? My home is basically a studio with an apartment, a flat, a house, whatever you want to call it, attached to it. I've got art everywhere, I've got art supplies everywhere, I've got artwork, paper, canvases. So I would love to have a space dedicated to it that's in the garden or near to the house that I can just walk out of my home and keep the home, well, I need some yeah, try and keep the home under control and then go to the art studio where it can be a bit more messy, organised chaos. In this one, we're just trying to add some learn the glass kind of technique, but it's difficult making it realistic. So I'm just going to have some fish in there and then just have some fun with that one because it doesn't really feel like me right now. It's understanding when it feels like you and it doesn't. There's just so much art representing time many hours spent studying art, many hours spent creating the art, many hours spent collecting the art supplies and getting enough money to buy them, many hours learning the craft and continuing to learn the craft every 
single moment. Every piece of artwork representing emotion and a moment in my life, every piece of art representing a time and place, some in the old studio, some in my living room, some in university accommodation. Each one has a different story to tell and they cover and line the walls of my house, of my flat. They bring a lot of emotion, a lot of energy. They change the feel of a room. And I can only imagine what it gives people when they buy them. Does it change the energy of their room? What does it remind them of? What memories do they have connected to my artwork? I've had this painting for a while trying to create a realistic looking glass bowl within a glass bowl within a glass bowl with the world inside it and yet I couldn't I just don't paint in that way and I'm sure there's a technique that I need to learn which I will keep looking and keep learning but I was thinking what can I do with this painting to make it feel like, like mine and feel more my subject matter and so I started thinking more about the disc world kind of world and that wasn't initially what I was thinking, but then I thought, where have I seen that turtle before? What's, you know, what universe was that described in? And I think it's mainly Discworld, and then, of course, you've got It and Ferris Ever that borrowed. But apparently it's been around for hundreds of years, this sort of mythological creature imagery. I have a few of these small originals that I don't think are quite up to par yet. So I'm having one of those days where your mind's racing and you just don't quite know what to do with yourself, but I thought, spend an hour, get into the flow, get into mindfulness and just paint, because I don't have to come up with the whole idea. I'm just trying to make it go from to something a bit more sophisticated and it's just not quite where I want it just yet. But I'm going to have some fan on because it's still quite warm and let's see how we get on with these. These are meant to look like coffee mugs, to be those maze dudes, the working out what's in our brain jar. So these are kind of cross between a jar and a coffee mug, and I'm a fan of Cuphead as well, so you've got Mugman and Cuphead. So that was probably in my subconscious when I was creating them. But I was thinking more of the coffee ritual and the morning. I'm a lot better now that I've begun the ADHD meds journey for the second time. It's working this time whereas before it didn't, but it means I'm up in the morning drinking less coffee, but there's a lot of coffee lovers out there and I'm still one of them, even though I'm drinking a lot less, thankfully, even though I do enjoy a good coffee. But these are sort of signifying more about what's in our heads and figuring ourselves out and feeling different with the ADHD, but then trying to figure out like how you operate and figuring out who you are. I just thought I wanted a little bit of intrigue to this other maze dude and so I had a bit more on that. And it depends what mood I'm in, whether I want to do these abstract, you know, lots of energy, allowing my inner child to really let loose, or if I want to be more precise and be more sort of technical and produce what is objectively a good painting, even though they're all good in my eyes. But there is those certain styles that people go, that's a good painting, which is a bit frustrating because there's a lot of work that goes into all of them to try and balance up the energy and the abstract and getting it feeling right. And I'm amazed because I've had a lot of people really connect to it and I've had a few inquiries and questions and I've had one sell. So I find it amazing that there's other people who connect to my little weird mug people and 
And so I have different modes and different moods. The art changes with how I feel and how, you know, what headspace I'm in on that day. And I like going into the more detailed, precise work when I'm wanting to be more in the moment in terms of being meditative and calm and and other times where I just want to let some energy out I'd be in the moment in that sense. There's only so many ways you can film painting and in my head it's really exciting. I'm pushing towards the finish line, I'm responding, I'm doing minor course corrections, I'm, I'm figuring out the puzzle and the challenge and deciding which direction to go in. But for those watching, it can seem like a very slow, methodical process, even though that's not what's going on on the inside. So my mind was all over the place today. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't f figure out which direction to go in. And I thought, I'm too tired to paint. Therefore, you know, this whole day is just pointless. But. I knew that if I started, I could be in the moment, listen to music and just be very present. And I needed that today. So art has actually given me a lot of energy today through just starting, just starting and seeing whether the art continues or whether the energy is, is too low. But having started, you lose yourself in that artwork and I got a lot done. It's a, it's a strange phenomenon, art, because you start and then you feel this need to carry on because it's not really a good point in order to in order to stop and it felt good to get all of these out of the way and not in the sense of i don't want to paint them but just if you know my mind of these ideas these living things in my head for a long while and they are like different worlds and so I wanted to honour them and bring them into the, the physical realm. I don't like to waste paint, but by the end of the painting session, I'm absolutely exhausted mentally well, and physically too so usually I just very crudely use what's left over and put on a canvas, put on these wooden bookmarks or whatever just so you, it creates this texture as background so it's going to be a challenge for next time but I can make it more sophisticated later so I try to use up the, up the paint because I just don't like to waste it and leave it on the palette if I can help it. Usually I would use a brush, but there are days where you just do what you need to do. It's two o'clock in the morning. I've just come back from a really lovely party and Usually me and parties, socialising, don't really get on, but everyone, yeah, they're my people, so I had fun. Um, most of the time I was observing and I could have almost sketched actually, but yeah, it was nice just sort of hanging out and talking to people and have people come up to me and stuff, so. But <laughs> I haven't been all that um, sensible because... Well, I've got to get up in five and a half hours, so I'm hoping the cafe opens early so I can get a coffee or two in before starting, although these days two is kind of my limit anyway. Sometimes you just got to say yes to life, and I got invited less than 24 hours ago, so it was yeah, a last minute thing, but it all turned out well. I gave people a lift back because I don't drink, as another video explains why, and yeah, I felt like a yeah, but it's just, I mean, the karaoke, people can sing a lot better than I can, and just a lot of people that I knew, and you know, sometimes you just got to, I just needed that after this really busy day of working on the art and things, and 
tomorrow. We're at the flea market. Well, that was a lot louder than I could ever have imagined. I had this really lovely artist next to me who screen prints their own t-shirts and started asking loads of questions because I've never created the screen myself and I think it's something I want to get into so that I have that hands-on approach. Kind of reminds me of Keith Haring from New York and it's something I want to offer because having wearable art seems to be it's like self-expression and that is exactly what art's about and to be a part of that to be able to give someone something that allows them to express themselves is yeah quite an honor it's something i want to explore if i can figure out the techniques and things because i've done it before but it's been a long while and i need to remind myself and in college they had a technician and they never taught us how to do it which i think is a real disservice because they could have taught us how to actually make the screens and would have been yeah i can't remember if we actually did anything i think we just sent them the design i think there's always room to learn something new at any stage at any age these are also the same artist who creates these fluid pore medium with resin as well as their t-shirt and screen print work by a painting from this. Hopefully I wasn't as sweaty before I cut down again, but really great atmosphere. A lot of conversations. I've been invited to do a live painting at a funk music event, which is going to be really fun. Um, it's not for any reason, just it'll be fun, you know. And the money is not the root of all evil. I do need money to live. I do need money to give back to my endeavours of Give my life to art and there was some there that, that this was their full-time gig and the flea market's just a little top up and they do the festivals and things so yeah i hope people appreciate it but didn't sell too much art sell two stickers so that went to a young child and mother so kingfisher and cats gave them a little bit of happiness but what i'm really happy about is that i sold the vintage ringmaster outfit that I've worn a couple of times, more so in my 20s. One for the Mrs. Elenius Sideshow, which was a art show in my second year, all around the freak shows of Victorian times. And so I wore that back in the days of drinking to go out and be yeah, part of the show. But that's gone now to a performer, so I hope we can make good use of it and a bit of history. So someone else can enjoy it. So I'm really happy that went because I've had it for such a long time and it's good quality and needs to be passed down through the ages really. So 1980, Cambridge Circus, a really good vibe, a lot of music kept me going. Uh, before the ADHD meds, I haven't talked about it too much, but before I started taking those, which is the second time trying it, before I started taking them I would not have been able to go out last night and do the flea market and organise and, and then get upset about it not working. And But I really enjoyed myself and I got a few little drawings done which I may develop into other things so absolutely knackered I need to have a shower um, I look a mess <laughs> but I have long got fed up of just trying to look the part on, on film because I'm an artist I'm covered in paint I'm, I've got a stupid thing with the anxiety where I, when I'm setting up and packing down to get really sweaty and I even brought a little towel this time because I know what, what my body does which is I'm only putting artwork out for goodness sake but yeah it is 26 degrees today though so Reasonably warm, but yeah, really nice summer vibes. Yeah, thanks for being here for the flea market again. Hope you got a good vibe from all this, and thank you to Epic Kate for editing this. I don't know how much of this monologue she's going to use, but thank you, and 
the money I've made today will go towards the edit of this video. So I do want to get to the point where I can afford to have Katie for every single video because I'm just getting busier and busier with trying to get this art thing working. Right, so keep scribbling and I'll see you in the next one.